first thing I want to do is remove the wheel. So take off all five of your lug nuts with a 21 millimeter socket. Now take the wheel off. If it's stuck on here, go ahead and put a lug nut back on so it doesn't fall off and then use a rubber mallet and hit it from the back side. That should pop it right off. Take the lug nut off now that the wheel is free. Go ahead and wiggle it off of here. All right, take the wheel off. And now with the wheel off, I'm gonna take the cotter pin out of this upper ball joint, straighten it out as much as possible, and try to remove it. Sometimes it's too rusted and can't be removed, in which case you can just cut it flush with the nut and then just take the nut off over the um, cotter pin, and we'll have to drill it out. In this case, looks like I'm able to get it out of here, which is good. There it is. Now take a 21 millimeter socket and remove this castle nut. Leave it on a few threads, and then we're going to use a hammer hammer right here on the knuckle, and that's gonna pop the ball joint free off of the knuckle. There it goes. Now I wanna remove the axle nut. I'm gonna take this cotter pin out. Now take off this little cover, and then with a 36 millimeter socket, we can remove the axle nut. Make sure that the axle pushes through. If it's seized in here, use a hammer and punch it through. I'm gonna take a pry bar, pry down on this control arm so that I can remove the nut completely. And then once I let up on the control arm, be careful because several things are gonna happen. One, the knuckle's gonna to wanna to come forward and two, the axle's gonna to wanna to pull out of the knuckle. So make sure you pay attention to both of those things. Don't let the knuckle go too far. You don't wanna extend your brake hose too far. I'm gonna push the axle through. There we go. Let the knuckle come forward. I'm gonna take off the two 18 millimeter caliper mounting bolts so I can get the caliper off so I can move this knuckle further out. Probably should have done this before, but sometimes you can get away without doing it. I guess not this time. I'm gonna leave this one in temporarily. Take off the uh, caliper. I'm gonna set it up on top of the upper control arm. From underneath the lower control arm, you can put a 14 millimeter socket on the sway bar link nut. Holding the top of the 14 millimeter wrench. At this point from the top, um, well, this sleeve right here in the middle is frozen completely on there. So there are several options. One, we can cut it. Two, I can try and open up the sleeve and see if I can split it or basically just get rid of it in some way, shape or form. I'm going to try. And if I can't succeed within a few tries, I'm just gonna take my cutoff wheel, cut this thing right here and be done with it. Looks like I freed it up. Okay, you know what this means. I can take it out the nice way. Okay, and there you have it. Sway bar link is removed. Before I move further, I wanna take off the ABS wire. And if you follow it up, you can see it's hooked on in a few different places. This is one of them. This is what the clip looks like from the backside. It actually has an eight millimeter bolt there that we have to remove. All right, now this is free. If you keep following it up, it's attached to the brake hose over here. Pop this off. Follow it up even more and you'll see that it goes up in here on the fender liner. Remove the wiring harness. And if you pull it down, you'll see the connector 
over here, press the tab and disconnect it, remove your ABS wire. The next thing I want to do is remove the outer tie rod end from the knuckle. I'm going to take out this cotter pin. Thankfully, it looks like mine is not seized in here, so I can maybe take it out a nice way. Usually, they're completely stuck and you'll have to cut them. Grab your 22 millimeter socket and remove this nut. Take your hammer, hammer on the knuckle until the uh, stud for the tie rod pops through. Next, I want to remove the lower ball joint nut. So I'm going to take out this cotter pin. Well, mine is not coming out, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a chisel and a hammer, flatten it out, or you know, cut it flush, so I can put a socket right over and uh, take that nut off over the cotter pin. 24 millimeter socket, remove this nut. Watch out because there's nothing holding this uh, knuckle in anymore at this point, other than the pressure of it being stuck on here. So I'm gonna put this nut back on, a few threads, and then I'm gonna hammer on the knuckle right here, and this will hopefully break it free, make it fall down off of the ball joint. There we go. Now you can remove the nut, pull the knuckle down, and remove your knuckle, set it aside, and now we can work over here. The next step is to go underneath and locate the torsion bar adjustment point, which is on this cross member right over here, and count, count the amount of threads that are underneath this key here. So for me, I have four threads. It's easy to remember uh, because we'll have to adjust it back to what it was before after we're done doing this job so that you can have proper right height, otherwise it's not going to be level. And now that you've counted the number of threads that there are here, take an 18 millimeter socket, back this bolt off completely. All right, go ahead and take this out of here. And at this point, you're going to want to come in through the back side, right over here. You'll see this little access hole with an air hammer and a bit, and drive the torsion bar straight through. Slight change of plans, that's not going to work. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to unbolt the control arm from the frame, and obviously because we're replacing it, I'm not worried about it, so I'm going to cut a uh, relief cut right here. That will hopefully make the control arm want to split, let go of the torsion bar here, and back there where it's bolted onto the frame, I'm going to unbolt the whole cross member and then slide this back. The only downside to this is you have to do it to both sides, so you have to replace both control arms at once which I am, so it works out for me. Unfortunately, you, you might be able to get away with just doing this to one side, but when that cross member swings back, it's gonna, if you don't unbolt both sides, it'll swing back at an angle and you, you might not have enough throw in this. But you also might be able to drop the control arm down just enough to slide the control arm out if you're just doing one side. So you basically kind of have to figure it out as you go. Um, but for now, I'm gonna loosen up these bolts here, front and back, so that I make sure that they're free. I'm gonna leave them in, I'm gonna make my relief cut, and then uh, I'm gonna take out the shock absorber and continue with removal. 21 millimeter socket on the bolt side, 24 millimeter wrench on the nut side. I'm gonna spin the bolt out. What this is gonna do, the reason I don't have my gun on here is because I wanna make sure that this breaks free internally as well. Sometimes it seizes up inside the control arm. All right, it's awesome. I'm gonna leave this in here, like I said. Now for the front, you can see the nut is right here. However, the head of the bolt actually goes through the frame in the front. And right here you can see this plastic cap, which we can pop off with a pry bar or a screwdriver, whatever you have. It's not quite what I had in mind, but I guess I'll have to fish it out later. There it goes. 
There it is. So now we can stick our 21 millimeter socket in there and loosen up the front bolt. Now the control arm is free. Next I want to unbolt this cross member here. It's got two 15 millimeter headed bolts and two 18 millimeter nuts that hold those and then one main through bolt that's an 18 millimeter in size. Now let's do the same to the other side. All right, I'm gonna give it one last chance before I cut here. Next I want to remove this bump stop off the control arm. It's just held on with an 18 millimeter nut underneath. All right, looks like we'll have to heat it. Let's see what this does for us. Bring it back in. Okay, now out. Hey, we win. Pull this out. Save it for the new control arm. Now I need to remove this shock bolt, the lower shock bolt. So this is an 18 millimeter nut, and then this is a 13 millimeter headed bolt. However, I have a feeling it's pretty stuck in here. So I'm gonna heat this up a little bit as well. I'm gonna hold this side with my 13 millimeter breaker bar. And then here I'm gonna use my 18 socket. Okay. This is free, the bolt spins, that's great, because sometimes they get seized inside the bushing there. So let's grab a hammer, punch it out. As you can see, it's not in great condition. Reusable, but not great. We'll clean this up. Control arm drops down. Now we can push these bolts through. Here we go. Take this one out, set it aside. Watch out, because this control arm is heavy. And there it is. Okay, let's take the new control arm, slide it up into position here. Have your bolts ready. Oh, there we go. Once you put in one in, you can let go because it's not gonna fall out. Let's line up this one. Doesn't quite line up yet. There we go. Push it all the way through. And there you have it. I'm gonna start the nuts on just so that it's secured, but I'm obviously not gonna tighten them yet. I need to bring this control arm up to ride height and only then can I torque it. Otherwise, you'll be putting extra pressure on these bushings because they're gonna bind up in whatever position you torque them in and then as it's driving down the road, it'll prematurely wear. Now let's bring the control arm up, line it up with the shock and I'm gonna reuse the bolt that I have. I will not be leaving this in. I'm gonna replace the shock in the near future and it's gonna get a new bolt. I would not let this vehicle go with a bolt that looks like this. As you can see, it's pitted. It's corroded. Well, it was because I cleaned it up in the wire wheel, but it's missing threads all the way from here down. It's not a great bolt to reuse. If you had to, um, I guess you could in a pinch, but 
I strongly suggest replacing a bolt that looks like this with another grade 10 bolt. It has to be a grade 10 because otherwise it'll be too weak to support the weight of this. So like I said, I will be replacing it, but only for the purposes of this instructional video, I will leave this bolt in. Now I'm gonna put it through. Let's get the nut on this side and I'm not gonna tighten this one yet either. Again, there's a bushing here that needs to pivot and I wanna bring everything at right height and then torque everything. I'm gonna put my pole jack underneath and this is going to help me raise the control arm as well as the shock, everything up. Now, if you're on the ground, you can just use a floor jack. And I'm just gonna estimate right height. You don't have to get it perfect. You just have to get it close. So right about here, where the control arm is kind of parallel with the ground, I'm gonna call this right height. So now I'm gonna torque this bolt first for the lower shock. I'm gonna torque the nut side, not the bolt side, but I will snug it up first. That way I can at least get it close. 87 is the torque for this bolt. That's it right there. Now let's put the nuts on the lower control arm bolts and go ahead and torque them to 148 foot pounds. I'm gonna run them in first so that they're close. Now let's torque it and I'm gonna torque the nut side that way I get a more accurate torque specification because usually if you torque the bolt side you have to overcome the friction of the bolt itself as well. So. That's it right there. Now let's do the same to this other one in the front. For this one I'm gonna have to hold the bolt through the frame with my breaker bar while I try to torque this. That's it right there. I'm just gonna double check it. Okay, that's torqued. And now, of course, if you're doing them in pairs, now's the time to do the other side. Next, I'm gonna put the bump stop back into the control arm. It only goes on one way. If it doesn't really fit very well, it's because you have it backwards. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now I wanna take the torsion bar and make sure that it's facing the right way. I'm gonna go ahead and insert it into the uh, control arm. Once it's lined up, you really can't put it in the wrong way because if it's the wrong way, that means the key on the back side isn't lining up. And obviously, if that happens, you can't put in the little adjuster bolt. So it can only go in one way. And uh, there you have it. It should go in nice and easy. I cleaned up the rust on it a little bit, put some ADCs. Now I want to put in the mounting bolts for this cross member. And try and line it up the best I can. Slide these through and these smaller ones have the uh, washer or the nut that goes on top on both ends and then this one in the middle had a built-in threads in the bracket over there so all right i'm going to try and center it so that it's where it was before i'm going to do the same to the other side that way i make sure it's all lined up and then we'll snug these up i'm going to start with the center one i don't really have a torque spec for this so just make it nice and tight And now the two side bolts, 18 millimeter on top, 15 socket on the bolt. There we go. Do the same to the other side if you disconnected it. So when we disassembled, I didn't need this tool, but um, for assembly, I need it to push the key a little bit higher. This is a uh, torsion bar tool. And what it does is you can loop it over. Typically, there's a little spot, a hole, that this nub can fit into at the top. I don't have one here in my cross member, so I'm just gonna hook it over like this. You don't need to put a ton of pressure on this. You need this to just basically lift up on this adjuster key so that you can get your um, main adjuster in here. So I'm just gonna thread this on like this. You need my air gun on it. should be enough. Now we can slide our key in there with the adjuster and everything. Take this piece and slide it in. Make sure that these two divots line up with the uh, cross member and then thread this bolt in until it touches the torsion bar. All right, right there it's bottomed out. Now I can release my tool and then I can further adjust the height of the torsion bar or the tension that's on it through this bolt. 
take this out. Now as for adjusting it further, um, you might have a different result with the new control arm here. I personally do. I have way more threads sticking out further down than I had before. I had four before and I didn't even have to use the compression tool to actually take this adjuster out because the control arm, the torsion bar was just free floating in there. So I think my control arm was so bad that it was just making, putting no pressure on this torsion bar. Um, so now I have more tension on it, which means I'm going to have to adjust it differently. That comes in at the end. Once we put the truck on the ground with the weight of the vehicle on the wheels, we'll take some measurements and adjust this accordingly. Basically what you want to do is once you measure the height of the wheel well up front there between the wheel and the top of the wheel arch, you can come back here and either add more tension to raise up the vehicle or release tension, unthread the bolt to lower the front of the vehicle. You don't want to max it out because then you'll have so much tension on it that it's going to ride way too stiff and if you make it too low, the front end's going to sag. So you just want to get that nice sweet spot. Preferably you want to measure the distance between the uh, ground and the wheel arch. Obviously make sure both front tires are the same PSI. And then right here, like I said, you would thread this in to add more height to raise the vehicle and you would thread this out to lower the vehicle and just get it to a point where you're happy and it sits nice and level. And of course, I'm going to do the same to the other side because I had both sides apart. Now let's put this cap back might be hard to press in place, so you can just get a rubber mallet and bonk it. At this point, I want to get the knuckle back in, so I'm going to slide it over this lower ball joint. Okay, I have the nut over here. I'm going to put on the nut so I can let go of it, because it's pretty heavy. Now I'm going to take my axle, make sure it has any C's on the splines here. Mine already does, and I'm going to press it in, stick it into the knuckle. There we go, that lines up, perfect. Push the knuckle in, and now we have to line it up with the upper control arm. Take my pry bar, stick it in here, pry this down. Okay, press it down once it lines up and the threads come through. Go ahead and start your nut on so you can let go. I'm gonna thread it on as much as possible by hand. That way it has good thread engagement. I don't have to worry about it popping off. Definitely don't leave it in just one or two threads. That's not enough. Now let's tighten up this upper ball joint nut and then we'll torque it. 76 foot pounds is the torque for this. And now you want to continue tightening to line up the slot for the cotter pin. Mine actually happens to perfectly line up. You can't see it, but it's in there. So I'm just going to stick my cotter pin through just like so. And of course, bend it over to lock it in. Now it's time to get the rotor back on. If your hub is dirty or rusty, you want to go ahead and clean this down. Mine's already sanded down and I have any C's applied to it. You want to do the same thing. And of course, same to the back side of the rotor right over here. I have a new rotor, so I don't have to worry about it, but if you're reusing your old one, make sure it's clean. You want to have a nice flat mounting surface for this because if it's not, it'll sit slightly at an angle and you'll have issues going down the road. I'm going to put a lug nut on just to hold the rotor in place temporarily. Now let's put on the axle nut, snug it up, and torque it to 254 foot-pounds. I'm going to use my air gun to snug it up because it'll be way faster, but I won't be tightening it with it. It's important not to do that because you don't want to over-tighten it. It'll put too much preload on the bearing and it'll wear out prematurely. Again, 254 foot-pounds is the torque for this. I'm going to stick a pry bar in between the lug studs like this to prevent the hub from spinning as I try to tighten it. That's it. Now grab your caliper and let's slide it over the rotor. I have a bolt ready so that as soon as it lines up, I can thread it in and then let go of it because it's not very light. Okay, that one started. Put in this one at the bottom as well. Bottom them out and then we'll torque them to 136 foot-pounds. And two. Now let's tighten up and torque the lower ball joint. Bottom it out. And the torque for this is 112 foot-pounds. That's it right there. And at this point, you want to make sure that the slot for the cotter pin lines up. For me, it almost does, so I'm going to keep tightening. You don't want to loosen to make it line up. Always tighten. Now grab your cotter pin, slide it through, and of course bend it over to lock it in.
Now let's get the tie rod back into the knuckle, press it down, put the nut on, bottom this out, and then torque it to 76 foot-pounds. If your cotter pin hole does not line up with the slot in the castle nut, keep tightening. Don't loosen to get it to line up. Right there is perfect. Get a cotter pin in, slide it through, and bend it over to lock it in. Let's re-secure our ABS wire. Nice and snug. Now let's go ahead and plug it in. Make sure it clicks, and let's resecure it. Make sure the wire goes behind the control arm here, above the uh, shock tower. Push it in. Perfect. Now to put the new sway bar link in, you have to disassemble it. It comes assembled like this, and this is how it's going to sit in with the sway bar in here and then the control arm through here on the bottom. But we do have to take it apart so we can actually get it in here. So take off the nut on the bottom and everything except for the top bushing and the washer. This is where it comes down to personal preference. I like to grease these sway bar links up, uh, this, this style especially because it has this sleeve that sits here and over time it rusts and it will completely seize up on the sway bar link. So I'm going to grease up even where the bushing is. I'm using brake grease so it will not affect rubber in a negative way. It won't swell it, it won't do anything bad to it. If you want to use silicone paste, go ahead and use that. So I'm going to put the sway bar link through like this and then through the bottom I'm going to insert another bushing and I'm going to make sure that it has this uh, lip facing towards the top. The other side is flat. With that bushing in I'm going to put one of the washers in facing up like this. Now I'm going to put some grease on the part where the sleeve is going to sit. Put the sleeve through then put in a washer like this and then one of these bushings and then you're going to want to stick it through the control arm. Push it down. The other side is still attached, so that's why this is a little stiff. But if anything, that helps us out because it squeezes this down, and you'll see in a second why. It'll allow for more threads to be down there. And now underneath, you can see all the threads that are sticking through. Put this bushing on, just like this, and then we have a washer, and finally the mounting nut. Okay, let's grab a 14 millimeter and tighten this up. I'm going to hold the top with a 14. I only want to tighten it until the bushing starts to squish a little bit. Just about there is perfect. You don't want to go a lot. You don't want to make it tight. You just want to make it a little bit snug until this bushing starts to squish a little bit. If you over tighten it, this will completely crush and it will prematurely wear. It'll actually wear very fast. Within a few months, you'll have to replace it again. So definitely do not over tighten this. And there you have it. Now you do the other side. I suggest doing them in pairs because they do wear out and uh, you might as well get it over with now. Let's put the wheel back on. Put on all five of your lug nuts and torque them to 150 foot-pounds. That is if you have the five lug wheel pattern. If you have seven lugs, then you want to torque them to 100 foot-pounds. Double check them. There you have it. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.